process. Uh, let's start in the most obvious place. Let's say, describe to us what your creative process is, the actual physical process. Just give us a very brief description and then a brief description of the discomfort that you may be feeling in the moment of it. Okay. Uh, my creative process has to do with metals. And I manipulate them with my hands and solder them together and use gemstones and um, the, the the whole process is done physically. It's not. It doesn't take place in my head. It takes place while I'm working with it. All right. So we have the, We all have a picture of what you're actually physically doing. Now describe to us briefly. The, so get into the moment of it. Mm -hmm. talk, talk as if you... So here I am. I'm at my workplace. I have what spread before me and I'm doing what and how is it causing my hands to feel. Give us a picture like that. Uh, it's, as I go on during the day, my hands begin to hurt more and more. The, my, my thumbs become almost so painful that I can't pick anything up. If I pick up a pencil, it hurts. All right. So now start out in the day and describe the first five or two, 10 minutes of your work. Um, the first five or 10 minutes, I'm usually pretty resistant. Um, meaning? meaning that it takes me a while to get into the flow of doing what I'm doing. When I sit down, I'm resistant All right, so to being So there. take us, well, it's, easy to understand that because last time you did it, it made your hands hurt. And so you're remembering that even going into it. Mm -hmm. So you're sort of negatively anticipating where this is going to go. And, and well, you're I'm worried. I'm also afraid that it's not going to succeed. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to make mistakes during the day. I'm going to ruin what I'm working All on. All right. And now, it's now you're at it. In other words, so what's happening is because you have materials that are costly mm -hmm. and because your time I itself is, feels precious to you, and because you, you, you don't want to make the mistake, you don't want to, to lose the uh, ingredients or lose the time. So there's that sort of uh, resistance that's bubbling underneath. And it is that resistance that is at the heart of the discomfort that has evolved. In other words, it really is not bigger than that. So now what, what we would recommend is so before you go to bed, tonight or, or are you planning to work tomorrow yes so oh, no no I'm not <laughs> so before you go to bed the night before you plan to work yeah as you put yourself in your bed acknowledge just softly acknowledge how pleased you are that you have this talent mm -hmm. and fixate for just a little while upon different things about your life that are well-being maybe the meal you just ate or the the bed that you're sleeping in or someone that you appreciate just focus there sort of bring yourself softly in as, as best you can to a, as good a feeling vibration as you can mm -hmm. and lie there in the bed and then just project a small thought that says when I awaken tomorrow I'm going to proceed with my work with a different vibrational attitude I'm not sure exactly where it will be and I'm not trying to change it all overnight but I know that I'll be in a different place and I'm looking forward to noticing that just something that soft don't make a big deal about it or it might keep you awake all night in other words just softly project that and then just go to sleep and then when you awaken in the morning awaken and let your first thoughts go toward appreciating your talent and appreciating your ability to create these things let your first thoughts go toward I'm good at this and and I've loved becoming good at this and I don't expect to hit it every time any more than than the Olympic diver always does a perfect dive even though he often does or any more than anybody gets a perfect score even though they sometimes do in other words I am going to give myself this uh, leniency this flexibility but I'm good at what I do just set that thought forth and I I love this creative process just use soft words that that feel good to you and then as you begin your work say to yourself 
I know that it takes a little while for my creative juices to flow. And I'm going to enjoy just dabbling here while the creative juices begin to flow. Mm -hmm. And then dabble in joy just a little bit. And then as you start getting an idea, then say to yourself, I love this creative mechanism brain and I love these ideas that flow and I love these hands that translate these ideas and I'm going to take care of these hands. I love these hands. So easy as I go, easy as I go, easy as I go. And then just proceed. Now in the first sign of the discomfort beginning to come, say to yourself, I'm not going to push through this pain at this time. I've, I've enjoyed the productivity that I've had just now and I'm going to take a break and then take the break and do your best to appreciate whatever happened. Because in doing this, what's happening, you're not pushing through the pain and you're not letting the pain get so severe that now you have to push through it. So you're going to retrain your response to the way your hands feel at the same time that you're retraining your vibration about the process altogether. In other words, your hands and how they feel is the byproduct of your resistance about the process. But you've got to soften both of them at the same time. In other words, now you've got two things to deal with. You've got pain to deal with, which if you keep pushing through is just going to cause more resistance. And the resistance is what causes the pain. So you've got, now it's harder for you because you do have the, phys the physical discomfort. But there are two things you're dealing with and they are both the same thing. You're dealing with the pain, which is evidence of resistance, and you're dealing with resistance, which is resistance. Now, how, so you're dealing with the physical pain, but you're also dealing with the emotional pain. Now, earlier we talked about the physical journey or the action journey and the emotional journey. The emotional journey is the most important journey that you're going to be taking because the emotional journey says, it can't matter to me if I blow these materials. I have to give myself enough latitude. It's like... Jerry and Esther have a dear friend who has a motor coach that is so magnificent. They care for this coach. They adore this coach. They wash this coach. This coach is like a work of art going down the road. It has been loved and tended to and cared for and adored for a few years now. And a dear friend was driving it a short distance and bumped it on something and made a very uh, big gash in it, which is time consuming and expensive to fix and these owners of this coach said it's just paint and metal it's just paint and metal in other words they were doing their very best to diffuse their discomfort which had to be severe in other words when you have something that beautiful that you love that much you don't like to see it banged up yeah. but they weren't willing to continue to bang themselves up and bang their friend up in other words they soothed this just paint and metal it's just paint and metal. In other words, it's just, it doesn't, it's just paint and metal. In other words, we can, get, we can restore this. We can get back to the... And so that's what you want. That you want to do anything that you can to diffuse the discomfort that you are feeling emotionally. You want to train yourself into giving yourself enough latitude that your creative juices can then really flow. It's our promise to you. When you are not all pent up about what might go wrong, so much that could go right that you haven't allowed to go right will begin to go right. In other words, you've got to talk your worry about those materials down, 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 down. So we have to tell you that the artists that are really joyful in their art and that are really selling magnificently and that are earning significantly are those who have come to appreciate their own art so much that they don't feel that they have to mass produce it. In other words, they've come to know the value of it. And as they feel and adore the value of their own creation, they imbue it with the vibration that makes other appreciators drawn to it. In other words, when you are really an appreciator of your own work, then you set a vibration forth as you create it that resides in the creation itself that attracts those that are up to speed with that. You see? Yes. So your work isn't to adjust your creative work so that it matches the vibration of the masses who will buy more. Mm -hmm. Your work is to <clears throat> align with the vibration of your greatest resources and align so consistently that there's a pureness in your 
creation that then purely attracts those that are up to speed with whatever it is. I think I know that. We think you know that too, yeah. but there is still this tension that you have mm -hmm. as you're trying to please whoever they are and as you're trying not to waste your resources. And by those resources, we're not just talking about the materials and the stones. We're talking about the resources of your time and talent. Yeah. You feel undervalued. You feel yeah. underappreciated. And so the whole time that you're creating, that's sort of bubbling in the background. Mm -hmm. And that's where the resistance started that then led to this greater resistance, you see. And that's the emotional journey that you're going to be taking while you, in an action journey, are kinder to, kinder to your hands. Yeah. Don't push them so hard. Don't push them for so many hours. Take more rest in between. In other words, even Esther has discovered she can type rapidly. And, and she can make a lot happen in a short period of time. And quite often after they've worked on the quarterly journal, which is an immense amount of, of entry and, uh, and editing that the two of them experience, quite often Esther will experience discomfort in her shoulders or across her chest. And she knows it's simply because of the position that she's tried to hold for so long. You see, you just, you want, it isn't that you want to do less. It's that you want to take more frequent refreshment. You want to care more about the alignment of energies and the alignment of posture, the alignment of, um, you're, you're all interconnected vibrationally, you see. And it is our promise to you that this is not an increasing condition that's going to take your creative life away from you. This is not what is happening. This is evidence of resistance because of the creativity that is so important to you. So can you feel the balance that you're reaching for? You got to love it so much that you don't let it worry you. You got to love it so much that you don't let it push you. You've got to love it so much. Esther teased Jerry. She, she said, a, a, a great an awakening has come over me recently as I have been programmed, like so many, to do my work so that I could get it done so that then I could do things that I wanted to do. And Esther said, and, in, and so she's been trying to help Jerry get his work done. And then she realized his work is his joy. He doesn't want to get it done. <laughs> he, he doesn't want to get it done. She can't take enough things off his plate and put them on her plate that he will say it's done. He's looking for it. He's looking for the work. He, he, he's looking for it. It's not ever going to get done. They got the quarterly journal off to the printer and within 24 hours he was working on the next one. <laughs> Esther said, there's no done for you, is there? And Jerry said, we never get it done. Yeah. <laughs> he listens. Remember? We never get it done. <laughs> And so you're wanting to see this work as the, the, the life giving opportunity mm. that it is. Yeah. And we think that's what's bothering you. You said, I know that. And we know, you know that on many levels of your being, you know, that this is who you are. And as this pours through you, it's supposed to feel wonderful. And when it doesn't, you are so mad at yourself because something that is so joyful should be joyful, not painful. Yeah. And we say, just relax and tweak up the joyful, but don't be mad at yourself if you can't get all the way to joy. In other words, just be a little less uncomfortable and just a little less uncomfortable. And then smile as you're a little less uncomfortable. And when you put yourself in your bed after the first day of attempting this and you say, you know, I believe I did not experience as much discomfort today, then lie in your bed that night and smile and say, I am on to something. I'm now moving in the right direction. Good. Thank you. Everybody. Yes, indeed.